recording again, so I can't believe it's been an entire semester, but I just wanted to say, first of all, that I've really enjoyed this class, and I feel like I have personally learned a lot, and I've been able to kind of check my own bias in a lot of these situations, because I think that's one of the main issues, is in these scenarios of cultural misappropriation, we don't always, we can't catch it, because we it's a normal part of our everyday life, so I think one of the biggest solutions is being able to catch those things and make it not a part of our everyday life anymore. So I just wanted to thank you for showing me that this semester and creating a very informative environment to do that. So with that being said, I started out my paper with a personal example of something I've had to learn from in the past. So when I was younger, Pocahontas was my favorite Disney princess. I loved everything about that movie and I just thought I was learning so much about how this happened. But in reality, like, we all know that that's a very fantasized dream world of that, and that's one of the issues with it. But when I was in second grade, we started learning about Lewis and Clark, and my teacher actually confused Pocahontas with Sacagawea, and I thought that was really ironic because that's a really good example of that racial antipathy that we learned about because it was almost... Like, it wasn't just like, oh, Pocahontas, I mean Sacagawea. It was never caught. I was told the story of Lewis and Clark with Pocahontas in as the figure that Sacagawea was. And that's a good example of that because it was just a matter of unintentionally not caring enough to understand the difference between those two Native American women, um, which were two completely different women in completely different times that were are famous for completely different things. So I thought that to start off, that was a really good example of that. And that's something that I've experienced in my own life that I've had to learn from. So that was my first example of cultural misappropriation was just loving Pocahontas and then being confused by that um, scenario. Um, so I define cultural misappropriation with the textbook definition, which is the intentional theft or tangible or non-tangible cultural commodities by an outsider with the intent to be used for economic gain or to intentionally create an, um, a stereotype. So we've learned throughout this class that the mis this most extremely occurs in media because media is kind of in passing in our lives, but it has such a huge influence on what we do. And I experienced this when I watched Pocahontas and everything. So I thought about, well, if I was this confused, how does this affect Native communities on their own? And that's the term that we learned about of the cultural confusion. So it's where I can't separate the facts from the story. And so sometimes it's hard even for the communities themselves to show society how to separate the facts from the stories. So that's where cultural confusion comes from, is where there's so many stories you can't separate them. Uh, in this cultural misappropriation, the textbook talks about how it's like a freight train, and once it starts, it's really difficult to stop and even more difficult to reverse from there. And this has gone on for so many years, it's hard to know how long it will take to be able to fix it. Um, so this began with African Americans, and uh, it happened through these minstrel so shows that occurred when America was kind of finding their own identity away from European culture and everything. So what, these shows were the first true form of American entertainment, and it gave people an outlet and a like safe place to kind of explore their own curiosities and things, and this came out when they were dressing as blackface, and they were doing this blackface minstrelsy. And they would dress up as blackface and they would sing like traditional African American traditional African American songs that weren't really traditional. They were actually closer to European songs. And they would act in blackface and act like they were part of this culture. And so they became African Americans through doing this. And once that was kind of pushed out by society and said, okay, blackface is racist, that's not okay red face started becoming more popular because it wasn't the social upheaval of the moment. So then they started singing red face and everything, and that encompassed the same thing. They were becoming that culture is what they were doing. And so it started becoming a thing to, like, have that initiation into the tribe and, like, really become 
that in playing Indian. Like, you weren't just playing. You were a character that was that culture. And you were a part of that tribe. And you were doing all these things. And you were Native American. And that scene in Peter Pan, like we learned about, and Pocahontas, too. But Peter Pan, the boys, when they're on the island, they, uh, once they rescue Tiger Lily and everything, they get to be, like, initiated into the tribe, and they're shirtless, and they have the paint on their bodies, and they have the feather in their hair, and you have the plains teepees with the northwest coast totem poles, and that's an example, actually, of that cultural homogeneity, homogenization, um, where they're blending these completely separate tribes with completely separate traditions and they're meshing them into one thing. So what they're doing by this is they're putting this Indian character and they're creating this box and you can pull it out and you can say, okay, well, here's an Indian princess, here's an Indian chief, and this is Indian culture and I can act like this. And it's all in this little box and it's really neat and you can control what it is. So that's really what media is doing through that and it comes out in a lot of different ways. And one of the most interesting things in popular music that I found was that comparison between Marvin Rainwater and Don Farden about um, the song of the Pale-Faced Indian. And it was really interesting to me how Rainwater, even though he was Native American, about a quarter Native American, he, he just misused it so terribly as a stage presence that I feel like it almost harmed the image more by him doing that because he wasn't he wasn't experiencing those hardships and everything he was just capitalizing on them so that becomes this I don't know it just becomes this really distant thing that it's it's not happening to him so it's this idealized sympathy that he's acting like it did happen to him and everything and he he's just doing it to sell his records and to do these things and whatever. And that also happened with Tim McGraw and his song Indian Outlaw. And that one, it was banned from some radio stations and everything, but overall it was a hit on the charts. Like it was one of his, it was a really popular song for him. And even though none of those hardships happened to him, he capitalized on those hardships happening to other people and acting like it was him. So that's a really tough vision to see, especially with Rainwater. I think that was the most difficult thing for me to understand because he was Native American and he was more respectful to the traditions and he kept the real traditions in his music, but it was just, it wasn't the same at all. And so then when Farden did it, he removed all those true traditions and he completely just used it as a marketing tool for himself. So I think that was the biggest example that stood out to me. But I, once I was thinking about Pocahontas in my own life, and I thought about this video that I watched in high school, and it was by John Kozak, and he made this video called, John Kozart, sorry, and he made this video called After Ever After, and he went through each of the Disney princesses, and he kind of gave a real scenario about what actually ended up happening, and so I think that that's a really entertaining video that I think you would enjoy. It's a little vulgar, but it is, it, it's meant to be comedic in a way that portrays what more realistically happened with that. And so overall, I think that the best way to solve these issues is to realize these trends in our music and in our paintings and in our culture and our everyday life and realize those biases and be able to recognize them and remove them from our lives and I think that's something that I'm really going to try to focus on because I think that the more people that we can inform about this that's what's going to stop the train that's what's going to start to reverse it is people just noticing so thank you for a great semester and I really look forward to applying this every day and to trying to start making a difference so thank you